Hi and hello guys. I just got my hands on the new Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller board. So today in this video, I will show you all as to how you can get started with this new microcontroller board and also go through some basics of programming the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython. I have prepared a Git exclusively for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Through this Git, I aim to consolidate all the examples, libraries and firmware associated with the Pi Pico. So my focus is purely on programming the Pico using CircuitPython and MicroPython. So I have no intentions of going over C or C++. First we'll start with programming the Pico using MicroPython and then I shall follow it up with CircuitPython and then we'll alternate between both these. So we'll start with the basics and then uh, during the course of the time we should have all the bases covered. So to get started with uh, programming the Pico using MicroPython, first you need the MicroPython firmware. You can either download the firmware from the git over here or you can directly download the firmware from the MicroPython website. What you need is the UF2 file. So after downloading the file, hold on to the boot select push button on your Pi Pico and then insert the micro USB cable. So immediately you should have a directory called rpy-rp2 open up on your computer. Now copy the micro python firmware that you just downloaded and then paste it onto the rpy-rpy2 directory. So what will happen is the pico will automatically reboot and uh, after the reboot is complete the pico should be ready for programming. So in order to program the Pico, uh, we need an IDE uh, based on MicroPython. For that, we'll be using Tony. So the Raspberry Pi comes pre-installed with Tony. If you are in any of the other operating system environments, download and install the Tony according to your system. So I have already got the Tony installed. The installation process is pretty straightforward. I'll not go through that. So after you open Thorny, click on the run option and then choose select interpreter. In the drop down over here, select Raspberry Pi Pico and from the drop down under port, select the serial port on which you have got the Pi Pico connected and now choose OK. So first I'll discuss the basics of programming and then I'll show you as to how you can work with the onboard timer on the Pi Pico. So first step is to import machine. So usually in Python we just use import time. In micro Python we need to add uh, micro or u before the time. Okay. So now we need to initialize the onboard LED. LED equal to machine dot pin the onboard led is on gpio 25 comma machine dot pin dot out so instead of typing machine dot pin each and every time uh, you can just change the way you import the pins so you can type from machine import pin so now you can change this to LED equal to pin open brackets 25 comma pin dot out. So we are setting GPIO number 25 as an output pin. So on boot we will set the LED to 0 or we will turn off the LED on boot. And now comes the blink part. While true LED dot value one U time dot sleep zero point five LED dot 
value 0 and then u time u time dot sleep of 0 0.5 okay so now if you click on the run script option or f5 it will give you an option as to how, where the script needs to be saved choose raspberry pi pico give your file a name and then choose ok so now the onboard led should blink every 0 0.5 seconds so just observe what happens if you change the time intervals so now the blinking has slowed down so there is a main drawback uh, th with this type of uh, programming what happens is every time you use the mute time dot sleep the microcontroller halts and it does not execute any instruction that is placed after the sleep command so the microcontroller has to come out of the sleep and only then the next uh, instruction will be executed so this is the main drawback of using sleep command for this alternatively we can use the onboard timer let me show you as to how you can do that so we'll add timer to the import list and now we will initialize time as well time is equal to timer okay and then we need to define a function which the timer function will call back okay so this is tick timer led dot toggle so we need to declare the led as a global variable global led and then led dot toggle okay so now we need to initialize the timer so that you can do by time dot init frequency is equal to 2 comma mode is equal to timer dot periodic comma callback equal to the function that you have just created tick so now observe what happens when you run the script the time interval uh, for the blinking of the led is decided by this frequency so frequency is inversely proportional to time period so the time duration or the time period for frequency of 2 hertz is 1 over 2 that is 0 0.5 seconds so for 0 0.5 seconds the led is on and then for 0 0.5 seconds the led is off so as you increase the frequency the time period comes down due to the inverse proportionality and as you decrease the frequency the time period goes up okay so now observe what happens when you increase the frequency so now you can clearly see the led to blink much faster it's now even more faster let me slow down the frequency so 1 over 0 0.5 is 2 so the led will be off for 2 seconds and the led will be on for 2 seconds now so the advantage of using the timer function is that you don't use the sleep command and this timer runs in the background and after the timer is initialized you can have several instructions running also okay so this timer will run in the background 
and you can have other instructions running on the microcontroller as well. So, if you use the sleep function, uh, it will block the subsequent instructions, whereas the timer runs in the background and it will allow the execution of other instructions simultaneously. Okay, so in case if you are not comfortable with the frequency to time conversion, what you can do is you can do away with frequency and you can actually you can directly use the period period equal to you can give the period in seconds over here okay now observe what happens the led is off for 5 seconds and the led is on for 5 seconds Okay, so instead of using the frequency, you can directly use the period and mention the interval in seconds as well. So, this periodic mode uh, will allow the timer to run continuously. There is also another mode that is called one shot mode. Okay, so what this will do is it will run this function or the callback once after the set period okay so when we use this one shot mode after 5 seconds the led should be turned high and it should remain high thereafter so let us observe what happens when we run the script so just as we expected after a brief period of 5 seconds the led turned on and it has remained on okay so let me show you as to how you can stop this timer okay so assume that you have got this timer running periodically okay so for i in range of 0 comma 10 0 comma 10 So, what we are doing over here is while the timer is running in the background, we are counting from 0 to 10 in 1 second interval, and after 10 seconds, the timer is getting de initialized. Okay, so let me reduce the time period over here. So, do not get confused here, the period is in milliseconds, and over here, the time is set in seconds. So, as you can see the LED blinking has stopped. So, what you need to note over here is the period is independent of our countdown over here. So, the number of times LED blinks is independent of the uh, countdown timer what we have got over here. See, if you reduce the period the LED blinking should fasten. Okay, so now if I increase the period say to 6000, the LED should blink only once. Okay, so the LED turned on and it has not turned off. Say if we 
set the period to 5000 now the led will turn on and then turn off so we have got 10 seconds over here so the led will be on for 5 seconds and off for 5 seconds so just as we expected the led turned on for 5 seconds and then turned off okay so that is how you can use the onboard timer on the raspberry pi pico i have given all the examples that i covered in this video under the examples folder in the github page you can take a look at them try it out and play around with the examples and uh, you can get a grip of programming the raspberry pi pico using micro python okay okay so that is pretty much it for this video i really hope that you found this video useful and i hope that you learned something from this so in the next video uh, we'll take a look at programming the pi pico using circuit python so over the course of time uh, we should have other features of the pi pico covered such as spi i2c pwm and so on and so forth i will try and keep this git updated with the firmwares and libraries okay so thanks for watching Take care and bye-bye.